So, Father, we just, um, I just submit, I just submit to you, and um, whatever that you would have for for us tonight, I just give it all over to you, and I just trust you, and I just thank you, God. Thank you for what you're doing, in Jesus' name. So, y'all see, um, Redemptive Gift Prophet. So, the front will give you ideas of the characteristics of of the of the prophet on the back you'll see there's a list of mature things that the prophet does and immature things so that will give you an idea give that to give it to Nikki and this one too because I have one extra one so you can kind of get an idea you're gonna know people in your family that just the, man, this is them. You're gonna, or you'll go, oh God, this is me. You know, the more I talk about um, the the redemptive gift prophet, Lee's like, oh God, you're for real. Like I thought you were kidding. <laughs> like I just building myself up, like I wanted to be one. He's like, oh God, no. What I wanted to say real quick, y'all can actually snap a picture of that, and you can okay. actually read it from there. That's what I would do. You know, um, it's an idea. Or I can email it to you. Yeah. So. Um, email, we can print it and make yellow book because I think it's important for you to understand the functions of the body. Okay? Um, that is the best way. So one thing I wanted to go back in and start to teach about is that um, some ideas of, of the sevens, right? I told you last week that every gift goes in order of the sevens. So the seven um, days of creation, you've got the seven pieces of furniture in the temple. You've also got the, the seven things that Christ said on the cross, okay? Um, another is seven churches is, is another one. Um, there's some more, but we'll, I'll go through some of those um, that in just a little bit. So one thing that I wanted y'all to know about the prophet, the prophet is really um, sent to restore intimacy. And what's interesting about that is that um, intimacy is a really hard thing for the prophet. So God is usually using your weakest point um, as his strength, right? Big surprise, right? Um, so I was, you know, I had told y'all last week, I'm like, man, Lord, what's, you know, where's my weakness? So, I, so we can work on this together. And he's like, your worship. And I'm like, Awesome, that sucks, but it's great, you know, because I've already gotten to a place where now I'm doing it corporately, right? So, and I was like, why worship? I mean, that doesn't seem, and he's like, because it's the most intimate part of who you are. You're pouring out this intimacy of who you are with me, and you're just like letting loose with it. And I'm like, oh, okay. And he's like, that restores intimacy, that restores intimacy, and plus the power of my words, right? We talk. We talked about first day of creation, right? That he spoke and there was light, right? He created something that was not there, that there was chaos and void. Um, there was darkness and there was void. There was void. Okay. So anyways, we're going to go through the blessing um, because there is a, there's, a, there's a curse, and it's called the Armenian curse. And what it does is it prevents a person from receiving justice in both formal and informal settings. One thing that we do know about the prophet, the prophet loves justice. You can look at that. It's like black or white. And they're like, it doesn't even matter if it's in between. They want the justice. They like, And so you'll watch. Um, I watched as a little prophet came into my salon the other day. And her, <laughs> her sister got to be on the iPad while she was getting her hair cut. Well, guess what? The iPad died. And before she got her hair cut. And Miss Justice was like, you don't understand. Like, she got to play the whole time. And her mom's like, uh, <laughs> trying to calm the justice down of the little girl. But she's like three. So there's no common justice down. It is like full-fledged, high-powered prophet. Like, she is so mad because she didn't get justice. And she's telling her sister, She's like, I hope it dies next time you're getting a haircut. Oh like, she gosh. is so mad. But it's precious because that's the justice of a prophet. It happens to me. I hope it happens to you. And, <laughs> but see, what happens?
happens is the life of a prophet is usually um, their testimony. It's usually the story. That's usually what they pour out is their life. So they live, they live the story in their testimony that has so much power to restore you. And yet what they'll do is they'll live it out. They'll live the hardship of it out, right? And when they do, they see you suffering, and they're like, suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> Been there, done that. Yeah. You know? I mean, nobody, nobody, nobody knows anybody like that, right? They're like, you got to go through the same hardship I did. I hope you, it's hell. You know? They will. They're just like, they just, there's no comfort in it. They're, and, but in maturity, in maturity, what the prophet will do will come alongside of you and teach you so that you don't have to, that they can bring you through it, okay? So we're going to go um, go three. So Hosea demonstrated in his relationship with his rebellious wife, Gomer, to get, to get her attention, he had to punish her. Hosea 2, 2 through 13. People are not generally drawn to those who inflict pain on them, even when they know there is justice involved. They tend to resent the person who inflicts the pain. Yet in verse 14 it says, I, Hosea, I am going to allure her. Hosea could box his wife in. He could break her financially, and he could coer- he could, but he could not coerce her heart. However, God placed such a mantle of favor on Hosea that his callous, wounded wife turned to him. That's the power of intimacy of of the prophet. And after disciplining Gomer for her actions, Hosea was able to allure her into a place of intimate love. And she followed him willingly over and over and allowed time, allowed him, and in time he allowed her to heal her spirit, her soul, and her body. And so she would no longer call him master. She called him husband. And the justice broke her, but favor restored her. That is the power of the prophet that can happen over somebody's life. They, they are, um, they're actually drawn to the, bro- the broken. They're drawn to the strong ones in the room because they're like, oh, yeah, you'll make me better. Blah, blah. You know, they're like, they think of that. But then they see the, the most broken person as well in the room. And they can't, handle, they can't help themselves but to, to take on the hard cases. They'll take on the hard cases where nobody else will. There's, there's a few other ones, though, that will. I, just, I can't say that. So, so we'll go into the sevens. So, Whoa! Sorry. <laughs> day one, creation. It parallels the prophetic role of Jesus Christ described in the first chapters of John the Gospel. Christ, the prophetic word of the Father made flesh, brought into light, brought light into darkness of humanity. That's John 1. Um, so the redemptive gift of the prophet recognizes the light of the truth that is in the heart of the mind of God and speaks it forth, spiritually discerns things that the soul cannot see, understands the abstract principles of the mind of the Father, and receives insights from God that that can't be put into words. The first day of creation, God created the building blocks from which everything else came. The prophet's job is the fir- is prophet's job as the first of the seven redemptive gifts is to conceive new things and to work with the other gifts to bring them into maturity. So they're 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 a pregnancy. They they are pregnant with all kinds of things all the time. And um, which if they if they're in maturity, they bring they're birthing all the time, birthing new things, new things, new things, and um, but a lot of the ideas sometimes won't um, they won't come to pass because they're not really synchronizing with the other gifts, right? We said that the intimacy and relationships hard for the prophet, right? So they get a new birthing idea, it's all in them, right? And they mention it to somebody, and somebody's like, eh, probably not gonna happen, and so it dies. You know, and um, if we can keep um, our, our minds open to what, you know, people are saying and the creative nature of the prophet, we'll birth way more things. 
and um, productive things. And Lord, help them if they bring something with the giver. Remember the productivity of the, of yeah, it is so powerful you get those two together. They're just producing and producing and producing. Okay, so the items of the tabernacle. This one's fun. The first item of the, of the tabernacle was the brazen altar where sin was dealt with. One of the things about the prophet cannot handle hypocrisy. So what happens is they are irritated a lot with people that can not, that will not deal with their stuff. So, I mean, I've said this lots of times to Lee. Can you deal with your stuff? And in that tone. And in that tone. <laughs> and in those words. Yep. And Can you deal with it? Go ahead. She, she would, uh, as I look back upon, you know, acknowledging what that redemptive gift that she walks in, it's like, they just want the best. But they will, I mean, it's like very, very, very stern and very, deal with it. <laughs> Who do you think you're talking to? <laughs> you know, and, and you get, you don't know where she, but as you start, as I've been married with her for 18 years, that's the way it is. And that's the way it's always going to be, very to the point. There's no love or sugar coat inside. <laughs> <laughs> well, there could be some love, but there's, there's no... It's wrapped in a bomb, you know what I mean? But it's, 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 if it's love, it might be manipulation. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it, it'll cut. But no, no, it's, it's as I've grown, and now I see her, I can, and, and as I've grown in my gift, I'm like, okay, she's telling me to the point this must be the way it is. And I'm like, well, I could have presented that a little bit easier to you. <laughs> a little nicer. A little bit nicer. All with a bow. Here you go. You know, the prophet is not comfortable with a change in behavior without acknowledgement of sin. It's like, and, and I know that some of y'all understand this, like, oh, I'm sorry. Our, uh, sorry isn't nothing unless you acknowledge really what happened, right? Nice. If you, nice. can, you, can you just acknowledge this? Um, and you think that sometimes the knowledge would, would make them stop. <laughs> but that, and that's where the robin's like, can you deal with that? So it's done. Um, yeah. <laughs> so God made the prophet to desire the high standard of repentance and, and to require repentance and confession. In the temple, there is no other access to ho the holiness of God unless you first go to the brazen altar. In the eyes of God, it is essential, it's an essential first step in coming into his presence and knowing him is, a, is dealing with the sin. And so you'll you'll have prophets that it, that really they're like spot on. They're like, hmm, that that's not happening. Like that's not good. And that's not good and that's not good. So they tend to seem to be a little, you know, like they're criticizing, but really what they're doing is they're pointing out what they see. And uh, it's rough. It's rough, but um but it's also important. It's very important yeah. in the church, in the body. It's very important to have discernment and to be able to see that. Um, a lot of uh, ministries don't utilize these gifts. That's why we're, well, she's teaching this because it's it's something that's very important. I mean, I'm learning it as well. I've, I've lived with a prophet, and I saw it. I saw my gift as a weakness, but they're very to the point. It's very, 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 very vital to the to the ministry. It is. So the prophet is called to bring confession, not condemnation. And when sin is confessed and the animal was sacrificed, it was all over and done. When the prophet is designed, the prophet is designed to bring closure to issues and encourage the pursuit of an intimacy with God. So it's just like that. When, when the sacrifice is over, right, they see you like, going through it, they're like, come on, suck it up, buttercup, because they know that the sacrifice is important to you for you to understand that when that's done, it's over. It's over. And um, that's why that sacrifice of Christ, so they should bring that in with the mercy. They should have that instead of just like, hey, hey, wait, wait. No, no condemnation, right, for those who are in Christ Jesus. The first of the, and so the names of Christ, right, or the names of God. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. That's in Genesis 22. So God provided the ram for Abraham's sacrifice instead of sacrificing Isaac. The brazen altar is the place of sacrifice for sin. So even in the name, 
um, it's providing the blood sacrifice to cover the sin of man. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah? How, you like how all these things are lining up with the sevens? I love it. Um, the seven last sayings of Christ. So the first one that he said was, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Christ understood that the crucifixion was planned and that the Father had sent him to the earth for this. Um, so bitterness is the default weakness of the prophet. So the weakness is the bitterness, right? But what was the thing he said? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So when the, when the, when the prophet walks in bitterness, he's not walking in his true nature of how God designed him to walk. He designed him to walk in that, I forgive them, for they don't know what they do. You know, it's fine. It's fine. It's good. Because you are the one who paid for it, and that's and it's done. So it's definitely the weakness of the prophet. Um, the passion of the prophet, prophet of prophets for holiness may cause them to take up offense for God. And what is wrongful and sinful. I mean, we've never come across that, right? I can't believe that, oh, they're going to have to pay because of, you know, of God. They're fin People get offended about what what you're doing for God. Like, like God's offended at you. You know, he's already dealt with it. But the prophet will look at you and be like, oh, God, I'm, just, I'm so offended. I'm offended. And I'm offended for God for you, for what you've been doing. You know, it's that part of the prophet that really kind of gets into things that have nothing to do with them sometimes. Yeah, that's kind of that, that part, that that's what happens. Um, so they have to be, um, they have to realize that everything is filtered through the Father. Um, painful and unholy things are permitted for his good reason by a holy and loving father. If prophets will forgive and embrace um, the purposes of God without validating what's wrong, that is a really good thing. Um, what else? Can you please just say it one more time? I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If prophets will forgive and embrace the purposes of God without validating what is wrong. Oh, okay, hold on just a second. But it's like one sentence before. It is. Unrighteous things can happen to you. Painful and unholy things are permitted for his good reasons by a, by a holy, loving Father. There isn't anything that comes to us that doesn't go through the Father. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Everything has to go through him, right? Um, whether or not they're good or bad. Right? And um, there's, it, it, we have to know that he's good, regardless of that. Amen. Because not all those things are from him. That's right. Right? Right. So when we have difficult situations that have filtered through and come through us, um, it, it's one or two things. How, how are we going to deal with that? And what is, and the thing is, is that he's responsible to heal me. He's responsible. And when I know my identity, I'm like, oh, you have to deal with that. You, you gotta help me. Like, is there something wrong? You know? And um, when you get into a maturity, you start to go, if, if I'm having a hard time dealing with myself, then I have to go, okay, God, you, you may have to deal with me. You know? And allow him to do that. Does that make sense? Okay. The seven letters to the church. The uh, first one is Ephesians in Revelations 2. I know your deeds and your hard work and your perseverance. See, the Father has wired the prophet to thrive on hard work, to find gratification um, in it, to preserve, to break through, and to stay with something until there's closure. You know, I know there's many times that I've been working on things, and Leo go, how much longer until you're finished? And I'm like, well, until it's done. You know, and, and I know personally, I've even recently spent nights into the evening 
finishing things that needed to be finished. <laughs> and um, I love it because in Ephesians it says, I know your deeds. I know your hard work and your preservation. Perseverance, sorry. And I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men. And that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. Isn't that wild how that lines up with the characteristics of the prophet? It lines right up with who they are. It's just, it, everything lines up. Prophets endure pain for the name of Christ. God calls the prophets to bear in their bodies emotional relationships, ministry, and, and finances to a higher price than other gifts. That is not a mark of sinfulness or being inferior. He designs the prophet to endure hardships for the case of Christ. The prophet is willing to defend the reputation and honor of Christ for the gratification that they defend their war. To him who overcomes, I give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in, which is in the paradise of God. The tree of life was a part of God's design, the culture that would live forever. Based upon righteousness, godliness, and the unfolding of truth. The prophet is gifted to repair, to find solutions, to find keys to unlock things. Didn't you say something about keys a while ago? Exactly. So when you have things that are broken, when you have ministries that um, are not functioning right, um, businesses, like this isn't just for the church. You can watch the prophets in the world do the exact same thing. They, they, the gift is across the world. You can watch kids in school. You can watch little kids playing on the playground. And you see a little ruler <coughs> ruling, and you see a little prophets, you know, judging everything. And you know, little servants picking up things, and the little mercies all by side the kid that's crying. You know, it's all of that. You can see it all, like, functioning. It's so cute. So, um, a great portion of the prophet's life is spent repairing what is broken or trying to build something that has a flawed foundation. So they are your builders. They're the ones that will go in and repair the brokenness. Okay? That's in families, relationships. They're the ones that are going to fight. They're the ones that are going to call out the elephant in the room. I always thought, I thought... <sighs> Why does everybody get so mad when I point out the obvious? Anybody? Everybody? Anybody recognize that? Like, how come I just pissed off everybody in the room? I thought everybody knew that. You know? And all the family's like, <gasps> you know? All the family, like, and the prophet's like, what? You know? Come on. Somebody. Somebody give me an amen. 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 <laughs> a lot of problems. Don't get your full seven amens. I love this. Okay. What do you mean you didn't know the water was leaking back there? <laughs> How long have you been here? Exactly. And I've learned as as uh, when they get stuck on a task. It will be finished, mm -hmm. no matter the time. It's this has happened even recently, and I've learned over the years that I that's not my portion. That's not, I, and I as as I watch, I'm like, okay, you gotta go finish. I, I don't even know what time she's coming home. The other night she didn't come home till one, and my other prophet it was out there with her, just hustling. But the thing is, is we have to be able to recognize these gifts and honor them because they're on task. You know, things got to get done. They don't get done unless you have them. That's a, it's an important thing. It's an important piece. It's like a football team. Everybody has, a, has an assignment. Everybody has their, and if we miss that assignment, guess what? The other team scores. But if we're on point, if we're playing perfect, we, we are unstoppable. That's why we, fun, we, we want to function and stay in our way. So one thing that I, the reason why I had to go back to the prophet is because I needed to let y'all know about the curse. And I need y'all to let I needed to let y'all know about the blessings. Um, biblical for the teachers in the room, it's Genesis twenty-eight through twenty-nine. So Jake, so Isaac called for Jacob and blessed him, and commanded him, "Do not marry the Canaanite woman. Go at once to Pan Panaram, 
Pandamaram, whatever. Pandamaram. <laughs> I like that. I think we make it a song. Um, to the house of your mother and your father, Be uh, Bethel, take a wife for yourself there from among the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and increase your numbers until you become a community of peoples. May he give you and your descendants the blessings blessing given to Abraham so that you may take possession of the land wherever you live as an alien in the land of God to Abraham. Then Isaac sent Jacob on his way and he went to Laban and the son of Bethel. Okay, so the Armenian, the brother of, oh my gosh, who was the mother of Jacob and Esau. Jacob goes and he sees Rachel and he wants to marry her, but Laban tells him he must work for seven years and that he can have Rachel. On the wedding day, Laban tricks Jacob and he marries Leah, not Rachel. And, he, and Laban says, it isn't right for my younger daughter to get married. So basically, you know, he manipulated him, right? Mm -hmm. And so he loves Rachel, but not Leah. Laban the Armenian broke a covenant agreement that he had made with Jacob by giving, Jake, by giving Jacob Leah instead of Rachel for seven years of work. Laban is, seen, is, is seeking illegal and lawless ways to solve his own problem. Not trusting God would provide not trusting God would provide a husband for Leah. So Laban would not let Jacob receive justice by letting him. Do you see the justice? Injustice, okay? I know there's a long story to tell you that there was injustice to a prophet. Well, that so here comes a curse, right? He is now falling under that curse. This is Laban. I'm sorry. Layman that falls under. He actually broke covenant. Right. So there's somebody in in the family that has broken covenant. Okay. okay? Now it falls under a curse. Okay. Now, now there's no trust, right? I don't trust God to provide. Mm -hmm. Right? So broke covenant. Wow. So when we are living like Laban, the Armenian, we try to use God to fix things. We try to use God to fix things. Lots of prayer um, seeks to make seeks to make our will be done, not not God's will. We try to harness God to fix things and people the way we think they should be fixed. Freemasonry is the greatest open door to the Armenian curse. It is using ungodly spiritual powers to fix things in the business world the judicial system, and family system. So the lie is for the prophet in this. I can solve my own problems and fix things better than God. Now, when I heard this, I was like, oh gosh. It's almost even using your own resources to do what you know how to do. And just because you know how to fix things doesn't mean you should. Right? Sometimes... This is where the intimacy for the prophet is so important with God, is that you have to trust God to fix some things that, that you could fix, right? Because you see the design. You see, well, this could work, this could work, this could work, this could work. So some signs that, of the curse. You cannot solve your own problems in the context of civil law. You are continually facing legal issues or getting injustice and in basic business deals. You are misjudged and misrepresented in relationships with others. The focus is the focus on the one percent is is that that is bad about you versus the ninety nine that's wonderful. The possible causes of this in your life, okay, um, that you or someone in your family line sought lawless power in order to solve their own problems, okay. So. When prophets are walking in the blessing, okay, they, they have favor in justice. Injustice doesn't just happen to them, okay? This, this is what I'm trying to get across, okay? Um, they have favor in fixing things. Things get fixed, sometimes without them even having to do anything. 
okay? Because they trust God, right? So they go into intimate places with God and go, I can rest in this knowing that you are in control because I trust you, okay? But if you're functioning under the curse, what happens? I gotta fix it. I gotta fix it. I've gotta force you, God. I gotta make you do, make them do what they need to do. And that's really witchcraft, yeah. right? When you start functioning, you start praying and being like, God, um, I just pray that you make her do what she's supposed to do, <laughs> and you know, you start functioning the way she needs to, so Jesus. that we can <laughs> fix this thing, right? Yeah. All right. So not not necessarily the most healthiest prayer. It's an immature prayer, actually, if you really think about it. Those are immature prayers. You or someone in your family line relied on their own resources, taking justice into their own hands instead of allowing God to fight their battles. I'll tell you what, there's one thing when I got, um, when there was, a time in ministry where there were people talking about us really bad, like, and and we were hearing about it, and we're going, oh my goodness, what in the world? And I and I'm like, I'm about to go on Facebook Live. <laughs> you were. I mean, well, I don't know about you, but I was about to go on Facebook Live. I was like, oh, oh, because there's injustice. There's injustice. And I'm about to go on. So here comes bitterness, says my cousin and my friends. We're cuddled up in bed together with Facebook Live. And we're getting ready. I'm like, and I'll, t- I'll expose it, right? Because, oh, that hypocrisy of the lie. Oh, it was like, Ugh. it was raising up in me. Prophet was going, ding, 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 ding. You know? And um, the father told me, I... He said, do not fight for yourself. Let me defend you. And I'm like, but, 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 but. He's like, no. You know why? The father would not even let me submit under the curse. He said, do not. I will not allow you to go up underneath the curse. Why? Because I would have gone up underneath the curse in my ministry. How about that for for a revelation today? I would have subjected my own ministry to the Armenian curse working for another seven years for something that was rightfully mine if I would have just let him defend me. That's wild, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, if you're interested in the renunciations, for the prophet, let me know. I will make copies of them so you can, so that you can just spit them out. You can just read it and renounce it. I'm not going to go over it today because not every single one of you have that or or whatever. But if every single one of you have a prophet in your in your house. Every single one of you know a prophet. So even if you want the renunciations for the prophet in your house or the cousin that's a prophet, and you want to clear that up for them, and you have authority because you love them, then I'll give you a coffee. Coffee. But I am going to... And a cup of coffee. Blah, 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 blah. There's my water. You sing and you talk. So I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to bless the prophet. So if you're a prophet, I just want you to receive this. It is long, but I'm going to read it. I don't know how well I'm going to read it, but I'm going to read it. So prophet, you are a visionary. You are at your finest doing what God created you to do when you are trying to solve problems through discovering principles and applying them. You are called to see new applications and new ways to implement God's principles in new situations. In many things, you are the conception point. You easily do vision casting to get people, especially leaders, to see the call of God on their life and to embrace pain in order to live in their birthright. You can provide the vision to bring a group of people to possess their birthright. You are fulfilled 
when you can show a picture of God so real that it takes others to the point of excellence and experiencing all that God can do. I bless this inspirational and transformal quality in your gift. I bless your passion for excellence in yourself and others, especially leaders. You see the fingerprints of God on the broken and come alongside of them to restore. You celebrate who the person can become when liberated from their bondage. Your passion for restoration draws you, you to brokenness as you see the evil of sin and the restorative power of God. You understand deep damage is done to people and to the kingdom when sin is dealt with lightly. You stand in the gap between what is and what could be. You are quick to say what is wrong, but you know how to wisely handle principles of grace, reconciliation, and rebuilding to restore a broken life. I bless your fierce intentionality and your intensity. Ooh, I bless that. <laughs> Let God sanctify that gift of excellence because he is excellent so that you don't fall into perfectionism. I bless your need to be alone. God wants time alone with you for intimacy with him. It is important to give him the first fruits of your time. I, it seems that you are called to pay a higher price than the other gifts in your personal disciplines. There are seasons when God seems to be silent in your life. I bless you during these pruning times to build a deeper root system for greater productivity in, fruit, in the fruit that remains. In these times, God is drawing you up to a higher level. I bless you with making sense of your wilderness experiment, experiences, but sometimes you can see it only in hindsight. I bless your commitment to abstract truth. You're, you demonstrate faith based on principles of God, God's word. God said it. I believe it. This truth will work. Let it, let's go with it. The fear of the Lord is, is your stock in trade. I bless you with keen, sensitive ears to what God desires, because when you hear from him, you will do it. You often stand like a signpost directing, directing towards the way, the truth, and the life to incite others to action, to turn their eyes towards God, and to urge them forward. You take initiative and enjoy new things. You shift gears quickly. You change from one direction to another. You are active, not passive. Independence is a high value. You are a trailblazer and a pioneer, not a city dweller. You are a catalyst, not a slow responder. You think outside the box. You hate maintaining status quo. You know no fear in your basic boldness. You are not intimidated by the unknown or change. And I bless your hard work, your persistence, endurance, keeping on, keeping on when others would quit. I bless you. You're doing the right thing at great personal cost because it is the right thing to do. I bless your need to have a goal and a reason to live. Amen. 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 Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. So have some grace with your prophets in your life, knowing that they're probably building or birthing something, and anybody in this room that has birthed something, like a natural child, imagine that in the spirit all the time. That is probably how exhausted your prophets are because they're constantly in birthing. They're constantly conceiving and birthing. Do y'all like that? Yeah? Okay. So you also have a servant, right? Do y'all have your pages? Okay. So the servant, um, 
I'm gonna high, there, I'm just gonna I'm gonna read my highlights here because you'll have a lot of information about your servant. Okay. Um, do you have anything to say before? No, no, no. Are you sure? Okay. Okay. Okay, servants, um, they prefer to be invisible in the background. They work very hard, even hurting um, their own physical health sometimes. They are the life giver. Um, servants have a great gift for loving the unlovable, the hard cases. Um, so they're similar in that with um, the prophets, right? They're, they deal with the hard cases because they'll, you know, because they've just got very soft, soft heart. Um, they have special authority when praying for restoration in families, for the sick, especially in threatening, um, in threatened premature death, for nature, um, for nature and weather, and for land issues. So this is important for people in ministry to know because if you have a land issue, you might want to you might want to get a servant, you know, because they're the they'll they'll go in and cleanse it. Um. They tend, to toler they tend to tolerate indignity and shaming, especially in their own families, because they tend to serve a whole lot. Um, they just let people run over them. And so there's, a, there's kind of that shaming involved. Um, and yeah, so I won't, I won't go into more detail with that. They are team players. Servants are known for being practical, and they are committed to the present moment to meet people's needs. They don't necessarily see very far. They go, what, what, what do you need right now? I can see, you know, whereas, you know, the prophets are like, you know, in the future, you know, we're going to build this better so that you don't need anything in the future. And they're like bleeding out. And, and the prophet's like, can we just stop the bleeding? You know, can I get you something? Can I get you some water? Like right now? <laughs> what do you need now? So, so the principles of authority. The principle of authority parallels the gift of the servant. So, what I mean by that is, like, that's what they run in. They run in authority. Remember I told you all last week that they are the ones that have the highest authority? Um, the root iniquity is embracing peace at any cost. So that's kind of the, that's the weakness, right? They will peace at any cost. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't even matter. Like, they're like, oh, God, we just want to keep the peace, and, you know, and they'll just, they'll run themselves ragged trying to ha make that happen. So, um, I do have to read this. Okay. So, there's a big difference between the words um, domination and dominion. To dominate something means that you exercise the authority over them in such a way that you take what is rightfully <coughs> yours as yourselves, uh, for yourselves. You control them, and um, that's domination. And we are supposed to live in dominion, right? Dominion is exercising the authority in order to bring people into submission to their life, to life-giving laws of God. Um, this involves causing demons as well as nature to submit to God's authority. So that's what I'm saying. There's in in the prophet they have this high level of authority over weather, over all kinds of stuff. I mean, they. This is, oh, sorry, did I say prophet? Mm -hmm. Servant, sorry, I can't. Oh, sorry. There we go. Servant. <laughs> <laughs> um, the servant has a high level of authority. Um, yeah, demons will flee. There's all kinds of fun stuff that happened with that. Do we have any servants? You'll start to recognize yourself. The one reason that I, and I'll tell you what, I, the one reason I haven't handed any test out to y'all, because what it's really hard to, to test the gifts, um, because sometimes there's a significant amount of wounding, right? And all of a sudden you start looking like something else that you're really not because you have so much wounding on you, and, um, and you've hidden what you really are for so long. Um, or let's say this, let's say that... Um, you you know these pretty well, and you tend to mark what you you think you are, and and you alter your tests. Mm -hmm. I know that's hard to believe, but you can, and so because you know I know this I know this about myself. Oh, that can't be me because that sounds like the serpent, you know. <laughs> it's, it's 
how to do this. And so, um, That's good. so what I say, this is what I think. I think you should ask the Father, you know, which one am I leaning towards? You know, what, what, what would you rate me? One, two, three, and what? And then where, where are my weaknesses? And, you know, sometimes the people that are in your lives can kind of, you know, especially the closest ones to you, can really go, oh, no, you're not that. And, you know, and there's, then there's denial. I'm not like that. There's no way. <laughs> direct. I'm not direct. I'm not black or white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't serve others until I die. You know, that's not me. I know, I know my own limits. <laughs> yeah. So the, there's all of that. So it, it's you know, it's just figuring out who you are, and start to walking, walk with the Lord and in intimacy to find out, you know, where you are. Okay. So where was I? Oh yeah, authority. All authority has been given to me, and I am with you. The ultimate goal is to redeem, detoxify, and sanctify all individuals and institutions to their highest level. The servant has the natural drive to, si to serve those around them, helping others to become all that they were designed to be. God entrusts the gift of servant with this authority because the servant does not desire power for his own sake. So you'll have prophets building kingdoms and you will not have servants <coughs> building kingdoms. King, uh, servants are like, oh no no, I'll just be, I'll just be in the kitchen, you know. Or we, can you get up and can you can you you know do this in front of everybody? Can I do it and 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 then give it to you all, or can I just like slip it under the door? You know, that's kind of how you, that's kind of how servants run. So the authority of of the servant to pray for leaders. To use this authority to care and to minister to leaders, to release leaders from the bondage and administrative and, and of administrative tax tasks in the outer court so they can meet with God. Does that make sense? Kind of wash those leaders clean, get it off, get it off. To restore families, to bring restoration, salvation, deliverance, healing. It's funny, I wouldn't be surprised that most of your sozo people are not servants. To love the hard cases. Authority over the deaf spirit. So this is really important, I believe. To, I just think that it's important. They have authority over death. That's good. If you have a servant in your life, you better identify them. Because if you have the spirit of death trying to knock on your door, you're going to want to call the servant. Well, the servant come, come, you. come to my house. Uh, you, have, you live with one, you know? <laughs> Me. <laughs> <laughs> She's serving. You're a prophet. Yeah. <laughs> you I know, but that's my second gift. Oh, okay. um, um, they have authority. Um, how about how about miscarriages? You got family and people that have had miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage. Yeah. Get, where's your servants? Where's your servants? Things keep dying in your church. Get your servant involved. Pastor can't is having a hard time going from a funeral to a birthday party to. You know, somebody broke their leg in the hospital, and then he has to come back and be happy clappy. You know, if he's having a hard time, servant's really good to wash that out. And authority over land. The birthright of, their, of the servant is to live their authority as life givers to others. Right? If they have authority over death, what does that mean? That their strength is they are life givers. Cleansing, um, they provide the cleansing and authority to, um, authority others require to reach their destiny, restore, you know, all that stuff. That's good stuff. Okay, I want to get to the good stuff. Okay, we have to go through the curse. Okay, we'll go through the curse. It's the Moabite curse. It causes the, those in authority to limit the freedom of those under them, requiring um, those in bondage to serve at the expense of possessing their own birthright. So the lie is, when I build a platform of success, I, I am, you're not, the lie is that you have to build a platform of success under others. This is the savior mentality. That I will not, I can't be successful if I build my own platform, right? Because what is the, the fallback of the servant? 
I don't want, I don't want the platform. I don't want the authority. I don't know. And so the lie is, if I, um, when I build platform, uh, I can build a platform under others because they, they're the savior. They're the ones that can save me. Signs of the curse. Authorities are supposed to equip and release others by building the platform of, of success under you. Unrighteous leadership expects you to build a platform under them, serving their purposes at the expense of your calling. That's right. So they'll recognize the authority in your life and they'll put you right under them. Mm -hmm. And they'll build their own platform on you. Your authorities, your authorities um, do not equip you or release you either actively by holding you back or passively by ignoring you and not helping you to succeed. This could be your boss, your pastor, or your parents. Mm -hmm. I know that's really sad, but that's, that, this is, the, these are signs of the curse, right? Of you falling into that, that as a, as a servant, your authority in your platform should be evident. I know that's uncomfortable, for the servants. But even as a pastor, in our own house, we have to lift up the servants. We, we have to, because we, um, we have to steward what God has given us. And the most powerful gift in the house, being the servant, and I put them to go wash the floor, because they will. I put them behind me because they don't want to be seen. I let them do what nobody else will do. That is, that is a misuse of God's authority in your house as a pastor. We've, we've seen that in uh, other places where it was uh, like a business. I'm the boss. You're the workers. You know, I'm not going to touch it. As I've heard it as from, a, from leadership where... I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna cut that grass. I'm not gonna pick up that trash. I will. Yep, no, I understand. I. <laughs> but I expect you guys to do it. That's that's not a servant's heart, right? What did Jesus say? You know, I, the, 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 be, the best place is to serve. And he wants to. Yes, exactly. A great leader is a, a great servant. So I I just want to throw that in that there is misuse of it in the church. So. That's why it's important that you guys understand this stuff because we've seen it, and it's the ugly side of that of the ministry. But we we grow, right? Another another sign is money is continuously devoured before it gets to you, or promises are continually broken. That's the shame. That's that's of of um, of the servant. The key issue is also um, violation of personal boundaries. Um, people tend to overstep a lot with servants. Um, that's the that's kind of them living under the curse and not living in their own authority. In their rightful authority, they'll put up really good boundaries, and and then you'll see some authority come out. It's really cool. Possible causes of the curse: um, you or someone in your family remained passive under bondage because it was easier than standing up or leaving. You or someone in your family took freedom in the wrong way by responding with rebellion, resentment towards those who were in authority, even if they were unrighteous. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, I told you about the curse. Same thing, renunciations. If you want them, I'll make you a copy. For the servants um, in your household, for you, um, whichever. Then I want to um, tell you about the blessings. And it's that it would be the blessing of Esther. The blessing of Esther occurs when those in authority over you support you and equip you to succeed in your calling. And Esther lived in that blessing. She was orphaned, but her relative Mordecai took her and groomed her for excellence. That's awesome. That's awesome, right? That's a blessing. 
And when she had faced the king uninvited for the sake of her life and the lives of the Jews, Mordecai gave her perspective and encouragement and also mobilized all the Jews in the capital. So when, when the servant is mobilized, when they're put in a place of authority, look at the life-giving, the power over, over the spirit of death. I mean, the king was manipulated to kill the Jews. But because Esther, because Mordecai recognized her authority, he raised her up and groomed her and got her ready to be there. And she had authority over death. It built a platform under her for success. After the initial crisis, the king gave her authority to govern but she had no experience governing. That's the kind of power that is given to the servant. So the signs of the blessing, secure boundaries, and the freedom to expand as God directs. Tangible resources will flow your way. People find great fulfillment in building platforms under you. I know that's hard to understand, but it's true. Um, how to develop it. The, the blessing. Stop looking for the answer to why me? <laughs> um, do not default to bitterness. Build a fortress in your own life of how God has provided for you. Remember how that part that says that the things stop flowing? Start building a fortress of like, oh, God provided for me here. It's that thankfulness, right? That fortress you just start putting in your bank. Oh, he provided for me here. Oh, this is where he did this, and this is where he did that. It'll start to um, develop that blessing. That's good. Um, most people are used to making do rather than believing that there should be a system of people and resources in place that God uses to help them succeed. If, you, if God gave you something that would enable you to be more life-giving than you are now, what would you ask for? Clearly identify what would enable you to build the kingdom. That's good. What are you lacking in order to be equipped and released in what God has fulfilled you to do? Be tangible, life-giving blessing to someone else that is that you're not responsible for. And that's hard as a servant. Like you serve, serve, serve the people that you're responsible for. So kind of get out, you'd have to actually get out of your box. Serve somebody else that you're not responsible for. Whether you're receiving support for them, from them or not. Are we doing okay on time? It's really? fine. Okay. Can y'all go to the sevens and then do the blessing? Are y'all okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I still want it. It's okay. <laughs> He's like, no, I can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all need to leave, I understand. He needs the blessing. He needs the blessing. He's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you have to go, I understand. Um, so in creation, God separated the waters from uh, waters above from the waters below. The waters in the atmosphere, the pictures of the servant, because the atmosphere and the water is essential for sustaining life. The atmosphere, though, in most cases, is invisible. So the primary function of air is and water is cleansing impurities and diluting toxins. So it gives you an idea of how even in creation, how that second day um, is, is a picture of who you are as a servant. Um, the servant is not less significant or less vital than the other gifts. Oxygen is the most crucial component for sustaining life. Before God created any other life form, the atmosphere had to be placed um, to sustain life. The servant carries an important task of sustaining life through giving oxygen and through cleansing. The servant can walk through areas of defilement and iniquity without personally getting defiled. And that is one thing I want to bring up about the characteristic of um, the servant. Um, they can go into very, very defiled places without without even thinking about doing it. You know, in, in other other gifts maybe are not 
they, they maybe can't do it. You know, you can send a servant into um, a place of horrendous sin for even periods of time, and they'll come out just squeaky clean because they they don't understand they don't understand it. They won't get defiled, and that's part of their birthright is to come because they're the cleansing one. They're gonna wash you. They're all clean. They're gonna wash you, wash you, wash you. They're in there washing, and they, like, and you're going. They've got to be. That's probably not good for them to be in that place, you know. And oh, it's sad. They're gonna get defiled. They're gonna get spirits on them, right? But the servant well, is like Jesus and the prostitute and the tax collector. That's he didn't, right. He, he walked as a servant. Mm-hmm. He that's didn't right. get defiled. Wow. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's that's good. Picture, so picture of who Christ is. Love it. Um, second item of furniture: the brazen, the bronze, <laughs> the brazen liver that provided water for the sacrifices and water to wash the priests. That's where you have authority over those people that um, are in authority, right? Your leaders over the priest. Um, so when priests went to the brazen altar into the holy place, he had to go past the bronze laver and wash himself before he went into the presence of God. This is the picture of the value and importance of the servant's role. The servant is designed to pray for the leaders that they will be cleansed and renewed, to enter into God's presence. The servant is entrusted by God to facilitate and transition from the trenches to the throne. So they can go from like nasty place to like, ah! And they're, it's like they transition well. You know, whereas other other um, other gifts might just wear it, right? And I mean, I, ha- I have many prophet friends that will literally come out of a defiled place, and they're cussing and and like burping and farting, and they're like, "I'm sorry if I'm so rude to you right now. I'm just wearing everybody." They'll like literally wear it all the way out, and you're like, "It's all right." So, <laughs> you're not yourself when you haven't ha- when you're hungry. You know? <laughs> you know, you're not yourself. You're not yourself. Um, that is not usually the picture of the servant. The servant can come right out of it, and they're fine. Okay, names of names of God. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals, is the picture of the servant. Um, it refers to keeping people whole preventing diseases in, um, from coming in them. Um, according to Psalms 105, they came out whole and healed. Okay, this name, this name of God was spoken to the entire nation of Israel when they, have, when they had come out of Egypt. I am the Lord who heals. Because they had just come out of a tough place, right? And it's the... I, I will, I, when you come out, you will come out whole and healed. Um, he would keep them whole. Obedience and a desire to submit to God's authority comes naturally to the servant. And God rewards obedience with wholeness. Um, the saints on the cross. Today you will be with me in paradise. There's that life-giving. You know, this hanging there, hot mess, you know. You hadn't done anything but acknowledge that, oh, take me where, you know, take me. And he's like, today, you will be with me in paradise. Today. Done. Done deal. Servants must come into agreement with God, who, uh, with who God says they are. Regardless of circumstances or appearances or what people may think they are, The servant's calling is to agree with how God sees them and to live their God-given authority. The seven letters. Okay. I know your works, your tribulation, and your poverty. Your works. Many many things the servant does is not honored by others, but the Father sees them all. So I love that because it's even written in the letters. Like, I see it. I know your works and your hard tribulation and your poverty. The servant can be put in a tight place and continue to function. The one thing about um, and the tribulation, the one um, characteristic about a servant is you can put them in a really hard place to work, and they can still do it. You might put a prophet there, 
and they they they're like, get me out of this place, you know. Um, servant won't do that. They'll just they'll serve until they die, right? And um, that's not necessarily a good thing, but they can work in really really tough times. So when there's really hard times in their family, there's really hard times in their ministry. They just they're the ones sticking through it. Um, and I will give you the crown of life. Okay, poverty. The servant can appear impoverished by their circumstances, but they are rich in spiritual authority. Okay, and I will give you the crown of life. He who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. Because of their faithfulness, the church received a double promise, the, the crown of life to not be um, hurt by the second death. There is that authority in life again, that life get, giving, and authority over death. The servant carries burdens in prayer for the hard cases and impossible salvations. Other gifts don't share the passions with the same intensity. The servants um, have that authority to do that. Oh, goodness. This is a long blessing. So, y'all ready for it? I bless... I bless you for the richness you bring to life and caring for and caring for the need of others in practical ways. You know the blessedness of giving of yourself an act of kindness, thoughtfulness, and second mile efforts for others. You preach sermons without words, your sermons of service. You have few enemies. I bless your way of love and grace that puts people at ease. You communicate that the purpose of life is people. You are a good listener. You are a genuine and pers and you are you are genuine and personal in relationships, and you see the best in others. I bless your desire to invest your life daily, moment by moment, in things that last. But because of your desire to meet and to please people, you have difficulty saying no to complete demands. You get over overcommitted when you default to meeting people's needs without asking God. I bless you with learning the art of knowing when to serve. God wants to define who you are and to help you empower others with responsibility, not enable them. Be free in the spirit to say a holy, righteous no, even to some good things, in order to say yes to God's best. I bless you for being totally trustworthy and hard and working very hard. You exemplify a well, um, a life well lived. Nothing higher can be said than that you love, live for, and give yourself to the right things. Your strong sense of responsibility tends to attract people who hold their rights and sense of entitlement. You tend to be exploited by those looking for an enabler. Calling others, calling others to grow in character is more important than meeting their needs. I bless you to present your entire being available to God and His purposes, not for the agenda of others. Satan's only defense against the authority and the anointing of your servant gift is to get you to believe the lie that you are nobody. Therefore, you tend to have a battle for self-worth. You may have attracted dishonor, especially in your home. I bless you to see the value in yourself and believe God's truth about yourself and your call. Let Jesus impart to you true your spirit, true statements about the honor you are due. I bless you with a download from God of personal identity, worth, dignity, and legitimacy, legitimacy that conquers shame, dishonor, and victim, victimization. I bless you with knowing the honor that you have as one who carries the name of Jesus. Your shield of honor is the cross of Jesus. Receive the affirmation of others without finding something to apologize for. 
Choose to be as com com competent and excellent as you are. God wants people to see you, see who you are as a reflection of his son, Christ Jesus. You are you. You are beautiful. I bless you to live in a humility and love, rejecting dishonor and receiving the honor that Jesus thinks you're due. I bless you because you see the best in others when no one else does. You minister to the hardest cases, the one everyone gives up on. You treat everyone as if you are an entertaining angels unaware. You see in a person whom others have discarded the potential for that person to be transformed by God, to be life-giving in their world. You embrace deeply wounded, the deeply wounded in their pain. You demonstrate that God is a God of second chances. I bless the purity of your motives. You can be trusted and are straightforward, possessing integrity, truthfulness, and honesty. I honor you for the qualities of your pure heart. I bless your lo loyalty to your family. I bless you with God's purpose, desire, and focus. You minister to them. Ask, you, ask, him, ask him to shine his truth on, tru on their true needs and your place in meeting them. I bless you to have the mind of Christ and healthy boundaries to provide safe, a safe place for people to find their birthright without rescuing them mm -hmm. or falling into a savior mentality. I bless your passion for your family and family restoration, for marriage and for parent-child relationships. You have authority in prayer to bring the, extent, the extended family to restoration. Rise up in your new authority for specific restoration in people and in generational restoration in families, salvation and deliverances. And I'm going to say that again. Rise up in your new specific authority. I bless your anointing to bring people back to joy, but you can you can become a burden bearer with worry, anxiety, and false responsibility if you take on other people's problems. You are a joy giver, but you are not responsible for the happiness of others. You are a team player who likes clear parameters and guidelines. I bless your lack of desire to build your own kingdom. You work well with others. You are jealous for God's honor, and your heart's motive is to advance the kingdom of God regardless of the expense of self. It is, it is your right, it is right for you to not prefer the, stop, the spotlight. You do not pursue fame or steal God's glory, but you ask God to remove it from you, the label of invisibility. But I ask God to remove you from the label of invisibility. You are irreplaceable and vital to the life of all the gifts in the body of Christ. Many leaders have servants around them. You are drawn to the leaders and those in authority. You desire to make them successful. You have authority to pray for leaders in all areas. You have great fulfillment in knowing you are a life giver to those you serve. You desire to empower others to achieve their best. You have a long history of building a platform under others. You have great spiritual authority in prayer to pray for most of the authority structures that God has established. Marriage, parenting, ch church, government, and business. God uses your desire for invisibility positively and lets you go into many places under the radar for his prayer assignments. You are drawn to pray for government. I bless your anointing to pray for government authority. When you live in your authority and pray for the life of God to flow in government, God intends to see, intends that you see measurable results in transformation on spiritual and social issues. I bless your, your desire to pray for life and death situations, you're a tedious, 
you're tenacious in not accepting death as an answer. I bless your authority to pray, especially about premature death in leaders, family, captives, and wounded ones. You have a particular stewardship in prayer for healing and cleansing the land, air, and water. I bless your authority for restoration of the environment that has been damaged by the sin of man. You recognize the defilement in the land and apply the laws of repentance and cleansing. You intuitively, intuitively bless land and in alignment with the purposes of God in creation. Be bold in prayer to put a heavenly stamp on God's purposes of the earth. If you, if this resonates with you, will you stand up? I just want to ask you for forgiveness for anybody and every authority that has ever put you under who has not released you to the fullness of who you're supposed to be. And we just, we just praise God for the authority that God has given you over your family and over government and over the earth. And I encourage you to move forward in your authority, beginning to speak over governmental things, to speak life over your family. I encourage you to give life to everybody around you. And now that you are recognized, I honor you for all of the hard work that you've done that has not been seen. In all the places that you have had dishonor, I ask for forgiveness for the people who have dishonored you and for the, for the leaders that have not recognized the gift of authority in your life. I want to... Uh... I want to pray also for, just like Vanessa said, I do want to pray and ask for forgiveness as a minister of the gospel. I just want to, I want to say thank you for your heart of love and the way you continue to uh, pray and pray for the pastors, and and I and I ask for forgiveness that that we have pushed you guys aside, that we have overlooked the things that are done in the background. And, and the dishonor by saying we expect you to do something because you're the only ones that are doing it. So I just want to release a Father's blessing over you. Can I do that over you too? Come on. Father. And, and can we, I want, to, I want to anoint their hands and restore um, what man has tried to take away from you, what he has tried to build for his own kingdom. Good. place that has been misused and mistreated yes. and speak life back into these hands mm -hmm. yes. and um, restoration to the body and I just speak um, honor, more honor that, they, that you will carry such a place of honor and respect even in your own household take your keys Restore. Everything that, is, that people have used for their own authority. <laughs> and bless you with wisdom to know 
what you were called to, to work on and to serve, to build his kingdom and not someone else's kingdom. The Lord blessed you already. You've asked for um, provision and you've asked for people. God's giving you the keys in this season. God is giving you keys to unlock and people are flocking to your vision. And I just declare that there's going to be more and that these hands aren't going to, you're not going to have to to fight anymore because it's going to be so much easier because people are going to surround you. People are going to surround you and uplift you. People are going to surround you and your family and uplift you. And it's going to be so much easier. There will be no more, there will be no more woe is me. You're not lonely. You have family around you that love you. You have friends that love you and recognize those friends that love you. And Recognize them. Yeah. <laughs> life to continue to continue to serve the things that um, the holy and the kingdom. kingdom. Places of, of uh, dishonor any longer. She would not accept shaming, but she would begin to walk in her new authority. And she would say, I know, I know that's hard for the servants. I know, I know it is. And, it, and that's why God has given you the authority that He's given you. Because it's, it's hard to stand up, it's hard to be out front. Um, but that is, that is the authority that you have to learn to walk in. And it's going to be weird when other people serve you. It's going to be strange. And it's going to be really weird <laughs> when um, leaders come under your authority because, um, because they, they want the birthright as well. Do you understand that? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I know you go, oh, no, but that's weird. That's, mm, that would be uncomfortable because that would put me in a place where I'm responsible for something else. And it's overwhelming for you to think that you could be responsible for something else, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's overwhelming. It's but it, it, you have to allow him to, you have to allow him to be the anointing, right? You have, to, you have to stand in that anointing and allow him to use you in that weakness where you, you think that you're supposed to serve everybody else. Mm -hmm. And um, that's just, that's the true humility is going, Okay, that is hard to do. Okay, but it, it, I'm telling you, you're a vital part of the body, and um, in the body, walking in a new authority, and that's your responsibility to steward the authority that God has given you as well, not just ours. So we can put you in places of authority, and you quickly squirm back to the servant on the floor, and I'm going to just encourage you not to do that any longer. To begin to take the authority that you have and start to walk it out in those in those places. I uh, I believe that even that it's vital that we're doing this. I think it's a very it's a key. It's so funny that this is key that we're doing this now because of everything that's going on in the natural around us. I do believe that the churches are going to be filled again. I think that there's going to be churches are going to be filled again, but. How are we going to respond? Are we going to respond churchy? That's right. Or are we going to respond as sons and daughters? You know what I mean? Yeah. Are we going to respond as sons and daughters? Because I think we've done a really good job of uh, evacuating and showing the at nearest exits, you know, to the churches. Now it's time to show the love. As a servant, as servants, your, your role is so key. To be able to love those, to discern, to pray for the leaders who are going to have to go in and clean up some of this mess. 
and to discern and to and to, to do the things that other people don't do. So. Um, I, and and how about this too? He he said something that I he was on a totally different point. But how about the destruction of what ha is happening over the earth right now? You have authority over land. Oh lands, yeah, that's good. And wind and rain and and the weather. Y'all better get your voices heard right now. We've had huge earthquakes. And, you know, it's interesting because what everybody's saying is like, oh, it's God. He's bringing judgment. It's paid for. It's done. It's so the finished. problem is, is that we are not in the rightful places. We are not speaking from, the, from our own authority. And if the servants are too busy building someone else's and serving someone else's kingdom, they're not serving God's kingdom. So the authority that you have over the wind and the rain and the, and the storms, start to go outside and declare it over it, over, you know, begin to force these things out because I've watched as things get moved by the servants. I've watched wind and rain. I've watched wind kick up where there's not any wind and you're like, it's a desert place and all of a sudden servants calling up wind, you know, and here it comes. So you have the authority over it, begin to protect the wildlife, right? Mm -hmm. There's yes. there's fires out there, guys. Uh, this is just, it's just, I don't know, it's on my heart today, right? Because as, as here comes Irma, and she's barreling down on Florida. on Florida, and I'm going, we're the servants. We're the servants. We should be, y'all should be front line there going, oh, heck no. Yeah. You know? I thought so, the fans were going to take care of it. They have the National Fan Day Facing the hurricane. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Who? Look at that. No, it's really a group. They're going to face all their little fans up towards the hurricane. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, wow. They have a train that it would be. Probably started making that up, though. There was an earthquake last night in Mexico at 8.1. Uh, it's well since the night immediately knew because I just looked at my mother. Wow. I just and I just want to honor every gift in the room because um, do you, are y'all starting to see the pattern of how we need each other? Yeah. yeah. And um, how how easy it is to dishonor one gift because they have something else that doesn't that rubs you wrong, and um, it's real easy to go oh fuck she. She's that, so I can't handle that. Um, <laughs> and I can't deal with that. Um, but when we need to embrace that, because that's usually our weakness. And um, and we'll really, when we start to get through, when I finally get past the first two, and we get to the third one, um, you'll start to really see how it's so important that if you know your gift and you you start to recognize the other gifts around you, it's a lot easier to have much more grace with them because you go, okay, she didn't mean that. She didn't mean that. That's how she functions. That's how he functions. He is made for that. And I might need to step out of the way and go, go on, you know, come on, you know, or hold your horses, you know, let's clean this up a little. Don't forget us. Don't forget that we, you know, come alongside of you and we, and we take care of this. Don't don't blow us off. And the other one might recognize, oh yeah, sorry. Whoa, slow down. You know, I'll wait for everybody else so that we can all go together in one accord and be super powerful in whatever yeah. we're doing. Can I share something with this? Sure. The, the Lord showed me, well, I was praying mm -hmm. for the body and and, uh, and out of Matthew, I think. Anyway, um, and I don't know if anybody's familiar with the Big Hero Six, that movie. I've seen it kind of like where the magnets come together and it forms as he starts getting real powerful in the big body. Uh -huh. Okay, well, when I was praying and for unity in the body and the Lord showed me that, but I saw little people just, and they were like little magnets and he was showing me and he said, it's like that. If my people, if my body would just function in unity, That's right. it would be so powerful. And they would, because it's one body. So all these little people, but they were people, but they looked like the little magnets, and they just started coming up, and I was like, oh, wow, he says, this is, this is, this is what my body would do. Like, they would just stop. They would just stop and be united and be in unity. 
I just want to give y'all an example because we bring this we bring this teaching into our lives. So I'm a hairstylist. My client's on the phone. She's a prophet. Her daughter's a mercy. Her her ex husband is an exhorter. She gets on the phone with her mercy, who's driving through the streets of of Houston, and she's she's devastated. She's bawling. She's telling her mom. I feel guilty because my house is not flooded mm. and my friends just down the road lost everything and she's pouring this out on the prophet and the prophet's listening, right? And and she's like, listen, she's blowing out the greatness in her. She goes, listen, I know you want to serve them right now, but the best thing you can do is stay home with those little ones, let things get dried up because Guess what, Sarah? In, in five, ten weeks, a year from now, they're going to need you, and you're going to continue to go out, and you're going to serve them, and you're going to do great. Because she's pulling out the best, right? She gets off the phone with her, sits down, we're doing her hair, and there's an alert on her phone. The ex-husband, the exhorter, <coughs> who is having a party. Exhorter's having a party. So he let everybody know including the daughter, who's devastated. Come up to San Antonio, we're having a party. And, and the prophet's like, oh, no, that's wrong, because she's hurting, and you're an idiot. And, <laughs> you know, and right, she does, she, now she doesn't know what she's functioning in, right? She has no idea. So all of a sudden, she's like getting into something she doesn't need to get into. She is. Red. I'm like, oh God, you might be a prophet. <laughs> and so she's mad. It's on a huge screen, and we're both sitting there, and my eyebrows are like this, and I'm a prophet, and I'm like, oh God, this is how I could be. And so <laughs> she's like so mad, and so she's like, um, calling him. I was like, oh God. So she's like, and it's on speaker, and I'm like, oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> I'm like coming, and she's like, did you even think for one second not to invite her? He says, why would I? I include them all. I'm the evangelist. I mobilize everybody, you know? And so she's like, you have no idea what your daughter's going through. Here's the intimacy of the prophet. I was just intimate with my daughter. I know her heart right now. Do you have any idea how broken she is? And you're one a party, right? And so she misunderstands that he wants to be all inclusive because that's who he is. She jumps into a situation that's none of her business, right? So she pissed him off, right? She's, well, I'm not married to that anymore. And I'm like, oh, I'm sure that was difficult, you know? And then, <laughs> not that I understand. <laughs> She has this confrontation, and then she realizes, she goes, um, oh, God, Sarah's going to be so mad at me because it got me in the middle of it. And I tried to make it, I tried to fix something. And I'm like, so you might be a prophet. And I, and I kind of just generally kind of explained to y'all, um, to her what I explained to y'all, and she's like, so I should have stayed out of it. And I was like, maybe, maybe. But you know what? If you know your function, you need to know what you you tend to do, you'll start to learn what you shouldn't do and what you should do. So it's great. It when works. Somebody calls you bipolar. I just realized that the other day. You switch directions very uh -huh. quickly. I'm like, oh, thank you for for saying that, but. Because since you don't really know what you're, well, not that you don't know what you're talking about, but like you're not like, they don't you know, know you're fine. in the Lord, yeah. but. You're like, um, actually not bipolar, it's part of my gift. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, like, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, actually it's part of my gift, that's part of who I am. And if you're offended by it, talk to him because he looks a lot like me. Because he does. And that's, and that's the thing, and I think I said this last week, is that. You know, the father tells you, tell, told me, he says, hey, remind them the things that they don't like about the other gifts, that they don't like.
like that about me because that's part of who I am because he is all seven completely fulfilled in one and yes Oh, I said that's good. Oh, I thought you were saying yeah. Oh, no, no, that's uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just I just want. Yes. <laughs> Can you have like out of the seven have like maybe a, a set of core and then you operate and maybe three or four it comes out and. I, I, you asked me to write down three, mm-hmm. and I I've, I've been and I've started to see that I do function in the, in three. I, I know where my my main one is, and I know the other three, the other two are strong. So yeah, you know, I, I I'm gonna say that you'll easily have three, and they're very dominant, mm-hmm. you know. And if you're living with somebody, you'll pick up off. I mean, I will pick up off of her, and she'll mm-hmm. pick up off of me. You know, she'll take some of my exhorter, and I'll take a lot of her profit. And I'm starting to realize that my second strongest is my is prophetic. It's really, I mean, some of them like, wow, that's really cool. And, but back then, I was too mad and saying, she's the prophet. She's well, the prophet. And see, the misunderstanding is that the prophet is the one who prophesies. Okay, so that, that's not it. It's not, the prophet is not the prophetic gift. Y'all are all the prophetic gift. Mm-hmm. Y'all are all the prophecy gift. Every one of you do. And just because it's the prophet, it's... All it is is characteristics yes. because there's certain characteristics that God gave you for your road that you have to go down. That's it. And so um, he hardly ever puts together the same gifting because they don't, they won't do this, right? They won't, right. They will start to like rub up against each other and you begin to mature in the places of your weakness. Yeah. So can you be prophet and mercy? Like, because when you were, I'm almost everything on the prophet, except when you were talking about when someone comes in, you like, you want them to get in trouble too. No, I feel their pain. Like, yes, you can. Right? I told, like, I, right. I, I cry when I see them without them saying it. You know, like, you can feel this, like, like I her and her husband did when I came in last time. They felt, I know they felt it. Mm-hmm. You know, and so. Can you feel their pain and still be the prophet? Absolutely. Now, um, you can you can walk. That's discernment. Okay. It's not necessarily like the. F- there's not a feeler gift. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm not feeling, but like you 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 hurt for them. Like you know the pain that you went through. Sympathy. You don't want anyone mm-hmm. to have empathy. And there you go. And and so that tends to that sometimes tends to be the mercy. Um, so that may be one of them that you have. Okay, so we haven't gotten there yet, but you may start to realize that. Um, or you just have a very high discernment gift. Okay, and, and that could be the case as well. So That's still it's function. not, it's, yeah, that you, you still function as, you know, a prophet almost, and then have the gifting. That's a prophetic gift, what you're right. feeling. You're feeling, you you can feel when somebody's hurting, and you—that's a prophetic gift. The this is a uh, this is your characteristics. Okay. okay? And, and I, I struggle with that. That's why I can relate. I did. I was like, well, prophet, 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 or mercy, and I'm like, I didn't quite understand until you start understanding your characteristics and how you function, and where your qualities and your strengths are, and where your weaknesses are. What we want is for you to function in all seven. That would be awesome, right? You know, to have characteristics of all of them and be able to be mature enough. And it, it takes maturing. It takes actually maturing and being able to say, man, I went through that process. Now I can look back on that process and say, I'm glad. You know? You know, to kind of answer what you're saying, you know, the Father showed me one time, um, he showed me all these vials. And he showed me some that were, that were filled up really high and, one that's a little lower, and then others that were being filled up like this. And I was like, what is that? And he's like, it, it's the redemptive gifts. If you, if you could picture it like that, is that the more you mature, the more they start to balance out. And you start, they almost start to get confused about who you are. Because you're functioning at a high mm-hmm. level of all. That's good. And, and that's, that's the goal. Mm-hmm. That's the goal. And, to go, you know what? Um, I, I start to look like an evangelist because my I start to really um, 
hold on and love the people. You know, the Father told me one time, he says, Prophet, have you learned to love? Mm. It's, that's powerful for the Prophet to learn to love. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember when I fell in love with the people, um, all of my Prophet friends were like, that's so beautiful on you. And I was like, I don't know why I love the people. <laughs> some of the, the gift and I'm like, who can I identify with these things? I don't know if you guys are doing it. You're like, you're trying to identify people and that's the fun part of this. That's the fun part of God. Understanding everybody's characteristics and, and that's our job as leaders, as pastors, to be able to say, man, you're beautiful. I love your gift. You know? And I wanted to uh, acknowledge our friends. I'm going to call you pastor and pastor. Both of you both because they have their ministry, Fellowship by the Fire. I want to honor them because they're filming this stuff for us so we can put this out so we can come back and look upon it. And, you know, they put out our testimony earlier today. And we, I mean, I'll tell you what, looking back on our testimony when we shared it at the church, I was weeping again, you know, because it impacted me again. It's good. So I want to honor you guys in your ministry because this is a great ministry. This is going to, this is going to impact. We're not only, only going to be able to impact here. This is going to reach nations. This is going to reach cities. This is going to reach people's houses. So I wanted to say thank you guys for doing that, both of y'all. And see, so that's what we want to do. We want to mobilize y'all and get you raised up and functioning at confident, high levels so that you begin to raise other people up. That's the, that's the whole thing. Yeah, and before, I think, uh, before we go, of course, we want to pray with the offering. And then I want to lift up uh, Apostle Ryan, uh, our covering. He's going to Egypt. Uh, it just came up out of the blue. He talked to me last week. He was like, you know, this guy invited me. And then, out of, and then the Lord provided, like that second day, the full flight and back. Wow. So we want to lift him up to go to Egypt because he's going to share our DNA in Egypt. And that's the Father's love. And, uh, and I, you know, I, I just want to lift him up too. Anything else you want to yeah, there is um, one more thing, and 